Which is more important, audio or video? And what has this got to do with it? Well, this is serious overkill in my opinion. And I'm not necessarily referring to what's in the boxes as overkill, although it probably is at this point. I'm talking about the way they packed them. This box just had this thing in it. This box just had this thing in it it's the case for the other thing. That box, that's all that was in that box. And my guess is that one of those long boxes, one of these things, would have held everything that's in here right along with it. Although this one feels substantially heavy. I think I ordered something I don't remember. But anyway, as Janet and I look at making more videos together, we're more interested in a little bit different style that focuses more on the video and the audio than it does on what I'm doing right here and just talking to the camera. And that means capturing better audio and better just sounds of nature and the things that we're experiencing. So this box is the Zoom F3, which is a very small, compact, but as I understand it, very powerful audio recorder. We have a higher quality shotgun mic, although still a fairly affordable shotgun mic. Little wind cover for the shotgun mic. Some various mounts and stuff for the mic. And some cables to connect the whole thing. I think the only thing missing is batteries, and I think it probably takes four double A's. Now what I've used in the past for this kind of recording are these little handheld recorders. They're really pretty simple to use and don't do such a bad job of getting the sounds, but they're pretty limited. So things like the Tascam DR05, DR05 I guess is more correct, or the Zoom H1N. And they're not bad and I do use them some in the shop if I just need to make a little voice note that's going to go over the video but I'm not recording narrative at that time. So they do have some usefulness, and they are good because they're quick and easy to set up. This little zoom recorder, on the other hand, you can plug all sorts of different microphones in there. It's a two-track recorder, and I'm not real sure exactly how you deal with those tracks when you get into editing. That's something I'm going to have to figure out. But I think if you've got two similar mics, you can record in stereo, or you can record two separate mono tracks, and I've just got to figure out how you deal with all that. Looks like it only takes two AA batteries. So that should work now. I guess I can peel a little plastic off. Okay, now i got to figure out how to use this. The little Zoom F3, this is a 32-bit recorder, which means it records a higher dynamic range, I guess is the word most people would use. For most audio, if it's too low and you try to raise the volume, it's just going to have a lot of noise with it. And if it's too high, it clips, it kind of slams up against the maximum that a microphone or a recorder is going to be able to deal with. Even if you lower the volume, it's still clipping at a lower volume. So there's just this little range where you can record in and get good audio. 32-bit float is a much bigger range, makes it a lot harder to clip or get too low, and you can adjust the volume throughout that range when you're editing. So hopefully that'll work out nice. Then to go with this, we got a high-quality microphone, or I should say high-quality for me. As microphones go, this is pretty darn affordable. This is the Deity S-Mic 2S, 
and it will actually plug right into this. So if we want to just record this way, we can use this as a little mono recorder. You could put two of these side by side to get stereo with it. And that's got some real potential to it, just as a little handheld recorder that is much higher quality than, than the cheap handheld recorders. But it also has a mount, and you can put this on the end of a pole, which is what this thing is. And this pole extends to five or six feet, something like that. It actually has the cable built in, so this plugs into the back of the microphone. And then down here you can plug another cable in. and plug that into the recorder so that you don't have cables wrapped around the pole. They're all inside where they're not going to rattle and cause noise in the system. Of course we got a little dead cat, or in this case a dead rat, that goes over the microphone. And that helps protect it from the wind when we're outside. And no, this video is not sponsored in any way. Paid full price for all of this stuff. Probably spent more of what I should just to try something we've never tried before. But we think it's going to be fun to go out and capture various sounds out in nature, around town, even around the house or up in the shop. Lots of things you can do with this. And people create their own personal libraries of useful sounds that they can then bring into their videos. So instead of hoping that your little point-and-shoot camera or your cell phone got good audio that you can use when you were filming the turkeys running across the road or something like that. You can catch the turkey sounds separate, keep them in a file on your computer. Then when you need them, you can import them into your project and put them in your video. And that actually comes in real handy with drone stuff because drones don't capture any audio. So being able to have some wind and some bird noises and other nature sounds really enhances the drone footage when you're watching the video. But I've rambled on long enough. I think it's time for me to read some instructions, figure out how all this stuff goes together, and we'll pick this up again outside in just a minute or so. I think most of what I'm getting is probably just wind noise because this time of year, it's been rather breezy around here. Maybe I get a few turkeys, birds, some other noises, but I think we're going to have to get further afield than just right around here to see what we get. But if you're hearing the wind on the little lav mic I'm wearing, here's what the wind sounds like through this microphone, which should be a little bit clearer. Well, I think this is going to be a lot of fun to mess around with. And hopefully as spring comes on, the wind will stop blowing a little bit and the songbirds will come out. Then there'll be all sorts of good nature sounds to get some audio of. Go record streams and rivers. Even traffic noise is worth capturing. Then I'm going to put all of this stuff into my own little personal audio library. So as I need it to enhance a video, I can use it. Doesn't mean I'm going to use it all the time, and certainly I'm not going to record the audio like I'm recording to the camera right now through stuff like this. I could, it's well suited for that, but it's just a little bit more complication than what I go through. I think recording sound effects and special audio with this equipment, and just using voice the way I am with the little mic that I've got in my pocket here, is still going to be the way to go. But this is a pretty deep rabbit hole to go down. There is a lot of stuff involved for people that are serious about what they call field recording and going out and capturing various sounds and sound effects. They can create huge libraries of audio files that they either sell as individual files or sell packages or do custom work for special purposes. I'm not sure what they do, but there's a lot of equipment out there that's really high dollar. This is just scratching the surface. 
Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this little look at some of what we're up to, and we will see you for the next video.